Hey everyone, it's Caitlin Caggiano here for Premier Guitar. In this video, we're going to look at one of the most popular keys for acoustic guitarists to play in, the key of G. But we're going to make the chords in the key of G sound a little more interesting. Most popular songs use chord progressions which include the 1, 4, 5, and minor 6 chord of the key. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the 1, 4, 5, and minor 6 chord for the key of G. That would be the G, C, D, and E minor chord. If an acoustic guitarist were to play a 1, 4, 5, 6 chord progression in the key of G, it would probably look something like this. Basically all open chord shapes played in the first position of the guitar. Now there's nothing wrong with playing the chords in the key of G like that, and those voicings are fantastic for so many styles and genres. But what if we wanted to think outside of the box and make those chords sound a little more interesting? Check this out. I'm going to take the four most popular chords in the key of G, the 1, 4, 5, and minor 6 chord, so the G, C, D, and E minor chord. But I'm going to create more interesting voicings based on five very simple shapes. And the best part about this, there will be no bar chords used in this video. Now these five different shapes that I'm forming these voicings from are going to be coming from the very simple open chord shapes of C, A, G, E, and D. I'm going to create new creative voicings for the 1, 4, 5, and minor 6 chords in the key of G using these five simple shapes. Let's start with the open C shape. Here's the open C shape that I'm going to use for the 1, 4, 5, 6 chord in the key of G. For the major chords of the key of G, which are 1, 4, 5, the G chord, C chord, and D chord, I'm going to just keep the C shape as normal. Ring on the A string, middle finger on the D string, and index on the B string. And I'm simply going to move this shape so the ring finger is placed on the root of the chord. So for the 1 chord of G, place the ring finger on the 10th fret of the A string, which is the root G. Here's the 1 chord of G. For the 4 chord of C, place the ring finger on the root C, which is located on the 3rd fret. This is just your normal open C shape chord. For the 5 chord of D, place the ring finger on the 5th fret of the A string, which is the root D. Now for the minor 6 chord of E minor, we're going to place the ring finger on the 7th fret of the A string, which is the note E. But we need to make this voicing minor by flatting the 3rd, which is located on the D string. We're going to need to use our index finger to flat that note, and we can actually keep the remaining strings open. This is what we're going to use for the minor 6 chord of E minor in the C shape. So here is a 1, 4, 5, 6 chord progression in the key of G using only this C shape. Now obviously some of these voicings use notes outside of just the 1, 3, 5 triad of the chord, but these chords will still function as the 1, 4, 5, and minor 6 chord of the key of G. Now for the A shape. Here's the open A shape that I'm going to use for the 1, 4, 5, 6 chord in the key of G. Now here's what it looks like as a movable bar. Here's a G chord in this A bar shape. Now I already said there are no bar chords needed for this video, so we're going to open up some of the strings. I'm going to open up the G string and the high E string. So I'm going to have index finger on the A string, ring on the D string, and pinky on the B string. The G string and the high E string are left open. Now simply move this shape around so the index finger is placed on the root of the chord of the A string. For the one chord of G, place the index finger on the 10th fret of the A string, which is the root G. Here's the one chord of G. For the 4 chord of C, place the index finger on the 3rd fret of the A string, which is the root C. For the 5 chord of D, place the index finger on the 5th fret of the A string, which is the root D. For the minor 6 chord of E minor, place the index finger on the 7th fret of the A string, which is the root E. But again, this is our minor 6 chord, so we need to flat the 3rd. The 3rd of this chord is located on the B string. We're going to flat that note, bring it back one fret, so we're going to use the middle finger. Here is what the minor version of the shape will look like for the E minor. Now here's a 1, 4, 5, 6 chord progression in the key of G, only using this open A shape. Now 
Now for the G shape. Here's the open G shape that I'm going to use for the 1456 chord in the key of G. Here's what it looks like as a movable bar shape. Now again, there's no bar chords needed in this video, so we're going to open up some of the strings. I'm going to open up the G, B, and high E string. So I'm going to have pinky on the low E string, ring on the A string, and index on the D string. The G, B, and high E strings are left open. And for each of these chords, I'm going to make sure that the pinky finger is placed on the root of the low E string. For the one chord of G, we can obviously just keep the fingers placed on this open G shape as normal. For the four chord of C, we're going to place the pinky finger on the eighth fret, which is the root C. For the five chord of D, we're going to place the pinky finger on the tenth fret of the low E string, which is the note D. Now for the minor six chord of E minor, we're going to place the pinky finger on the twelfth fret, which is the root E. But again, we need to flat the third for this minor six chord. The third is located on the A string, so let's flat that, move that back one fret. We're going to use our middle finger now on the A string. So here is the E minor chord in this open G shape. Now here is a one, four, five, six chord progression in the key of G using only this open G shape. Now for the E shape. Here is the open E shape that I'm going to use for the one, four, five, six chords in the key of G. Here's what it looks like as a movable bar shape. Again, no bar chords needed for this video, so let's open up some string. I'm going to open up the G string, high E string, and I'm going to mute the low E string. It's going to look like this. I have ring finger on the A string, pinky finger on the D string, index finger on the B string, the G string and the high E string are left open, and the low E string I'm muting with my thumb. We're going to move this shape around so the index finger is placed on the fret of the B string, which is the same fret as the root of the chord would be on the low E string if we play that full E shape bar version. So here's a G chord in this E shape bar version. The root is on the third fret of the low E string. So we're going to position our index finger still on the third fret, but now it's on the B string. So that can help us identify where these chords are going to be placed. So for the one chord of G, I'm going to place my index finger on the third fret of the B string. Here's the one chord of G in this open E shape. For the four chord of C, place the index finger on the eighth fret of the B string. For the five chord of D, place the index finger on the tenth fret of the B string. Now for the minor six chord, we're going to place the index finger on the 12th fret of the B string. Now this E minor voicing already has a flat third built in it with the open G string, and there is no major third in this voicing. So we can actually use the same shape for the minor six that we used for the major one, four, and five chords. You can also keep the low E string open. And you can also just use the open version of an E minor chord with any finger positions you want. Here's a one, four, five, six chord progression in the key of G using only the open E shape. Now for the D shape. Here is the open D shape that I'm going to use for the one, four, five chord in the key of G. Here's what it looks like as a movable bar shape. Now let's open up some strings because no bar chords for this video. I'm going to open up the B string. Now if I open up the B string for the shape, I can change my fingers to make this a little more comfortable. I'm going to keep my index finger on the D string, ring finger on the G string, and pinky finger on the high E string. The root of this chord is on the D string, so I'm going to shift this shape around so that the index finger is placed on the D string. That's going to be the root of the chord. For the one chord of G, place the index finger on the fifth fret of the D string, which is the root G. For the four chord of C, place the index finger on the tenth fret, which is the note C. For the five chord of D, place the index finger on the twelfth fret. Here's the D chord in this D shape. You can also just use the open D if you would prefer. 
for the minor six chord of E minor, we're going to have our index finger on the second fret, which is the root E. But we need to make this a minor voicing. So we need to flat the third. The third of this shape is located on the high E string. I'm going to flat that and bring that back one fret. So I'm going to fret this with my middle finger. So this is going to be index ring open middle. This is my minor six voicing, that E minor in this open D shape. Now for all of these chords, I'm only strumming from the D string directionally down. Here is a one, four, five, six chord progression in the key of G using only this open D shape. Now let's go through and see all of the new chord voicings that we've created. I'm going to play a one, four, five, six chord progression five different times. One with just that C shape, one with the A shape, one with that G shape, then the E shape, and then the D shape. Now before I do that, let's go back and listen to what the basic voicings of a one, four, five, six chord progression are in the key of G. Here we go. Okay, here's the C shape. Now the A shape. Now the G shape. Now the E shape. And finally, the D shape. I absolutely love these chord voicings and I use these all the time, whether I'm playing live, tracking in a recording session or arranging music of my own. This is a fantastic way to take something so simple like a song in the key of G and make it more interesting. Using these voicings will add more creativity, more dimension, more texture, and more color to your playing. And you can use these in relation to the capo. So if you're playing a song with the capo and your key shape is the shape of G, which just means the G shape is your one chord, you can use any of these voicings. So I challenge you the next time you're playing a song in the key or key shape of G, give these voicings a try. Happy practicing and let's become the most creative acoustic guitarists we can be.